you might be watching this video because you had a hard time installing Python. And so hopefully this will make it a little bit easy. The first thing I want you to do is just go to uh, Add or Remove Programs in your settings for Windows. And then come to the any Python installation that is there previously. And go ahead and uninstall it. Okay, so I'm going to uninstall uh, Python. It's going to ask you if you really want to do that. And then just click Next and uninstall. So it's going to uninstall everything and delete a bunch of files. This is going to be about you know a half a gigabyte or so. So it's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to pause it and then we'll come back once it's done. The installation is complete now. I'm just going to uh, select Next and then Finish. Okay, so you can see that uh, you know Python is gone. Go ahead and remove all your installations. This just is going to simplify this fresh install. Okay, and then once you're done with that, come to um, Anaconda Download. And this is going to be one of the easier ways to install Python. Uh, you can see there's, uh, this is a continuum.io. And you can say, uh, you know, this is download Anaconda distribution for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Okay, and that detects that I was on Windows. And I'm just going to grab the Python 3.6 version. You can get 2.7 as well, but um, there's excellent support for most packages with 3.6 now. Um, so go ahead and start the download. And uh, just go ahead and do Save As. And then put it somewhere that you can find it. Okay, so I'm going to put it in my... Uh, downloads folder and I've already in, in I've already downloaded it it's about half a gigabyte so give yourself a little bit of time to download that okay and I'll go ahead and close this and then I'm going to go to my downloads and then go ahead and uh, run this and just go ahead and do all the defaults except for all users I like to do that for all users just in case there's somebody else that, that has a, an account on your computer and they can use Python as well. And um, go ahead and give it uh, privileges, a yes there. And then uh, the default uh, directory, you can choose uh, C program data. Program data is kind of a hidden folder, um, and that's okay. Uh, but just, um, or you can change it, you can get rid of program data, for example, and then have a folder Anaconda 3 on your C drive. I'm just going to leave this as the default. Um, if you select this, it turns red, it says not recommended, especially if you have multiple versions of Python on your computer. If um, you have it set up where it installs the path automatically, then sometimes it get confused about which Python version you want to use. Okay, I always do this um, myself, edit the system environment variables, and then just come to environment variables, and then you can edit your path directory directly. Um, and uh, you know, just add uh, a new or edit the path for the default Python installation. Okay, so that's how I would do it. Uh, just go ahead and unselect that, make sure it's unselected, um, and then click install. This is going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to pause it again and then come back once it's done. Okay, this is almost done with the installation. It took just uh, about 10 minutes or so to complete, and it says complete. Go ahead and hit next. And uh, I'm going to unselect Learn More. We can do those later. And then you can discard this if you want to. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and recycle that. Uh, that just frees up half a gigabyte that I don't need laying around. And then what we can do now is uh, just come to a couple different um, things. We can do Jupyter Notebook and start that. Sometimes there's just a problem the first time starting it. I'll go ahead and try it. I have a space in my username, and I don't think it likes that. So let's just see if this one works. It'll just flash really quick, and then either stop or bring up um, the uh, notebook. Okay, so it stopped there. I had a space in my username. Didn't like that, so let me show you an alternate way to start this. And uh, I'm going to come down to Anaconda. It says new there. And I'm going to do the Anaconda prompt. Okay, and this is going to come up with uh, basically a command prompt uh, that's going to allow me to start um, Anaconda, the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and so I'm just going to type Jupyter Notebook. It's super small there, um, but if you're, you have high enough resolution on your video, you can see that I just typed Jupyter, uh, J-U-P-Y-T-E-R Notebook, and um, and then it's going to go ahead and start. It gives me a web address there as well, localhost, um, on port 888. Uh, eight. 
eight. Okay, four eight. Um, four uh, four eight. And then what you can do is you go to desktop, and uh, for example, click new over here, and then Python three. Okay, and then this has the Jupyter Notebook. You also see a little console thing running here. Don't close that. If you do, it'll stop your kernel and you won't be able to run Python commands. Okay, so I'm going to say A equals 5. Um, if you run that, um, if you hit Shift Enter, then it'll give you a new cell below it. And then you can do things like print A. And if you just hit Control Enter, then it'll show you the value of that. Okay, and now you can do things like uh, restart the kernel insert uh, you know, run cells, run all, um, insert cells above and below, and other things. There's also this um, on the side, this little keyboard looking thing, where you have a lot of other um, commands that you can ha uh, use and you can search for those. So for example, if you want to delete a cell, um, there it is, I deleted one of the cells. Okay, and then you can rename it um, first notebook, and we'll rename that and then save it. Okay, and what that does is it um, in the directory that you ran this, okay, it's right here, first notebook.ipymb, and it says it's currently running. I'm just going to go ahead and close this and also close this window. It's going to stop the kernel. And then what it's, uh, okay, these two right here are my first notebook. You can always just get rid of the checkpoints if you've already saved it. And there's my i dot ipymb. If you can't see the extension, you can come to uh, a folder and just click folder view and um, and then you can select options over here on the side. Okay, and then view and unselect this, the hide extensions for known file types and click apply. Okay, and that will allow you to see uh, extensions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. And then let's try uh, Jupyter, uh, Jupyter Notebook. Oh, I already did that one. Sorry, let's try Spider. Okay, this is a Spider desktop app. And this is uh, an integrated development environment with the code on the left and the commands in the lower right and then the variable explorer in the upper right. So the very first time you um, start this, sometimes it takes just a little bit of time to start up. And hopefully we'll see this little splash screen come up. Uh, there you can see Spider 3, and it says initializing. It'll load some things, just set up the default configuration, and then hopefully it will be on our way. But just the very first time you uh, start it, you got to be just a little bit patient. Um, it'll start up much faster in the future. So if you like Spider as well, this integrated development environment, you also might want to try PyCharm. PyCharm is very nice. IDE as well. Uh, it's free for uh, non-commercial use for um, education, and uh, but Spider is also very nice. Okay, it also runs an IPython instance. You got the IPython console. You also have the Python console there, but um, you know that one is going to be uh, removed in the future. If you get this thing that the kernel died uh, restarting, it's going to do that for a couple times. Um, you know, I just come to um, consoles and then I just restart my kernel. Uh, something's happening with the uh, kernel here. Um, doesn't typically do this but it looks like um, it needed me to restart it and let's see if it goes back to misbehaving again. Okay and, and uh, dying off there. Okay so kernel died. Let me just try that again. Okay, I'm not sure how many times uh, this is going to take, but it looks like it uh, restarted it, and let's see if it dies again. Okay, normally this doesn't happen when I start up Spider, but um, it did that time. Okay, so now I have um, over here on the right, I have uh, File Explorer, uh, Variable Explorer, and then also Help. Okay, you can hit Control I in front of a, any of the uh, objects and hit control I and then you'll get a little bit of help about that object. Okay, you can see here as well I have a um, just a simple program, a hello world program. If you double click uh, to the on the line you'll get a little red mark there and that's a debug point. It, when you run it uh, in debug mode it'll stop at that point and then you can scroll over look at the variables and so it does it step by step through your program. So the blue buttons up here at the top those are for the debug and then these are the normal run uh, commands with this one, uh, run file or F5. 
And then this one is debug. So if you have breakpoints, you can run it in debug mode. Okay, so I'm going to run this, and there you can see the output of Hello World. If you come over to Variable Explorer, you can see that A is an integer. It has size 1, and its value is 2. Okay, and then if you need any help, just go over here to print, for example. I'm going to hit Control i and then that's going to come up with some help about how to use the uh, print object. Okay, so that is Spider. So just to summarize, we've installed um, Anaconda, and uh, there are a number of other uh, programs here, but the ones I use most are Spider and Jupyter Notebook.